We started with that project, I think 13 or 14 months ago, expecting it to sell in the high 400s. We're under contract in every unit at 650. Holy cow. It's crazy. Hey, Kevin Amalsh, Pine Financial Group, where we work together so you succeed. You found us here on YouTube. You found us here on Facebook. Please, we're trying to grow a channel here. If you could just hit like, hit subscribe, help us out so we could help more real estate investors just like you. I am so, so excited and feel so privileged to have our guest on with us today, Nathan Adams, known him for a long, long time. One of the smartest guys I know you're in for a treat. Nathan, welcome to the channel, man. Thank you. I've got to get my intro down like you've got it down. That was impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I guess you do this enough. It kind of just rolls out of the mouth at this point. Yep. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about niches today. I know you've had some success in real estate, quite a bit of success in real estate, and then you attribute a lot of that to niches. But before we get into that, tell us who you are. Tell you who I am. <laughs> Who's Nathan? Uh, just turned 45 back in September. Still having a lot of fun with real estate. My company is growing at a rapid pace. We're, uh, uh, gosh, by the time you publish this, we'll probably have made the announcement. If not, you'll beat us to it. But we're making the shift as a company to go green. We're going to talk a little bit about niches today. That's absolutely a niche for us. We're growing at a rapid pace. We have brokerage, property management, development, construction, architecture. We'll have seven architects by the end of the year. So wow. it's... It's fun and it's frustrating at the same time. It's been so exciting to watch this. I mean, you and I started working together, gosh, was it 13 years, 14 years, something like that? Whenever you started Pine, I want to say I had a loan with you within your first six months. Yeah, I thought, I thought we were even working together right before that when I was still with Susan. But anyways, right in that 2008, maybe early 2009 range. Yep. Um, and I've just watched you grow and it's, it's been just a ton of fun, Nathan, to be, you know, a small part of that and to be able to, to watch it. Likewise, you guys have, uh, have done some cool stuff over that period of time as well. Yeah. Thank you. And you've, you've helped me a lot uh, over the years. So thank you for that. So niches, when you were starting out, you were fix and flipper, you were kind of spread a little bit all over the Metro area here in Denver. I've watched you kind of zero that in. So tell me about a niche. How is that? What is that? And then how has that helped you? Yeah. So for me, a niche has been, you know, finding product type or a neighborhood, or maybe it's a certain way to remodel a property or build a property that gives you a distinct difference amongst your competitors. So for me early on, I didn't know any better. I got into this thing kind of just before the whole mess of 2008. And I never really got to the point of building new construction prior to that. So I was buying bank owned properties, short sales, you know, basically anything that I could fix up and sell for more money than I paid for it, plus the rehab that I put into it. I wouldn't exactly call that a niche, but early on for me, niches were more neighborhood specific and how I developed the property or remodeled the property. So there were two neighborhoods that really stand out to me. And the first one is almost comical today, just given what it is, but it's the area immediately east of Regis University. I think I-70 on the bottom, 52nd on the top, which is where it transitions from Denver County to Adams County. And then federal, uh, practically all the way over to I-25, even though the streets don't quite go that far. It was funny because I went in and I, I was buying houses in that neighborhood for like $60,000, $70,000. And I had other rehabbers tell me, you're crazy. I don't know why you'd go there. Like you, you should definitely be on the west side of federal. And for me, it was a niche. I'm like, nobody else wants to be here. I can buy them easily. And they weren't that hard to sell. So long as I put the right remodel together, another neighborhood that was a niche for me. And, and frankly, I wish I would have done way more was Montbello. Everybody told me I was crazy for buying in Montbello in 2008. I did some fix and flips there. I, I owned some rentals there. The rentals that I owned, I bought for anywhere between 60 and 80, put 20 to 25 into them. I sold them a couple of years ago in the 300s. So, you know, three, three and a half X what I paid for them, which was really quite crazy. But the other niche for me back then is the first remodel that I did, I saved the cabinets. I put in for mica countertops. I painted, it was pretty amateur. I didn't do anything special and it worked. And I looked around at what everybody else was doing. And as the market started to become a little bit more challenged on the selling side of things, I thought to myself, wow, if I just make mine look a little nicer, it'll sell faster. So 
I distinctly remember everybody doing Formica and I thought, well, let's give granite tile a shot. And now in hindsight, you look at it and granite tile is hideous. And then other people started to do granite tiles. So I went to slab granite and other people started doing that. So then I take the backsplash in the kitchen from the countertop all the way up to the top of the cabinetry and eventually moved to quartz counters and always trying to stay one step ahead of where everybody else was at. And it was a time where it was easy to buy them, harder to sell them. And that niche of remodeling it just a little bit nicer made a gigantic difference. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Montbello. I still have that house you sold me in Montbello all those years ago. Gosh, I don't uh, remember that. Where, where was it at? <laughs> oh, it's on uh, Qu- uh, Quentin Street. So okay. It's got, yeah, I think it was like 2010 or something. So it doesn't surprise me you forgot. But yeah, it was a great area. I, I actually love that neighborhood, um, especially for rental properties. But yeah. Okay, so you were focused on areas. You had two, you mentioned two. We have a, a national audience here, but North Denver by Regis is what, 15 or so minutes out of the core? Yeah, gosh, downtown. I, I'd say you could, could do it less than 10. Less than 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a northern, it's still Denver, but it's on the northern side of Denver. And then Montbello is still Denver, but it's 25 minutes outside of the downtown area. It's out by the airport. So those are the yeah. two neighborhoods Nathan's talking about there. So you were focused on those two, focused on quality of finish so you can get them sold quickly. Yep. Um, and then and then what? And then how'd you progress? What's, what's the next niche? Yeah, so the ne- next niche, as it became harder to buy remodel projects, I started to get into putting additions on, popping the top. I wouldn't call those niches, but what I was hearing from the GCs that I was hiring is, gosh, if you would just rip it down and start over, it would be so much easier. So I took the plunge, I jumped into new construction and it felt a lot better because I didn't have to worry what was behind the walls that I didn't touch. I didn't have to think about lead-based paint. We were taking the asbestos out of the old building before we tore it down. We didn't have to worry about that stuff. And the first two projects I did were duplexes and that's not a niche. But right after that, I saw this kind of void in the market where there was like anybody who called themselves a developer that was on the smaller side of things was willing to build a single family or a duplex. And once you got up to about six units, it got a little bit more complicated. You started to have to deal with things like infrastructure improvements from Excel and the planning process with the city was more challenging. So there was a sweet spot between six and 20. And the reason we stopped at 20 is anything over 20, we were looking at having to put an HOA in place when we're building townhome projects and that brought on more liability. So that six to 20 kept all the small guys that just wanted to do the simple, easy projects out of the way. And the bigger guys, you know, eight, 10, 12 unit projects, there's not enough there for them. They just weren't excited. So for gosh, probably seven years, we played in that space, townhomes, six to 20 units, occasionally four or five unit projects, but the large majority of them were between six and 20. And that was a niche. It was a sweet spot. And like any niche, even going back to the neighborhoods that I was in, eventually everybody else comes. It's public record. It's in the MLS. They see what you're doing and then they start to do the math and figure out, hey, this is a pretty good idea. So, you know, that took us to, gosh, 2018. And when we looked at 2018, I sat on the slot home task force. They really changed the rules around building townhomes. We were looking hard for that next niche. And this is where the failure comes in. We thought condos were the next niche. We weren't the only ones to think that. And we jumped in, we bought three sites. One of our bigger clients bought a couple of sites. We ended up throwing all of our plans in the garbage away on one site, $400,000 worth of entitlement. Pivoted to townhomes, got it entitled, sold it to somebody else. We built one of them, five-story building. About three-fourths of the way through, we pivoted to for rent and ended up being a fairly decent call. We got it 50% occupied. This is crazy. Got a $17.5 million offer, a million dollars of non-refundable earnest money, and they closed in three weeks. And they actually got it done. They even waived the Alta survey with the title company in order to honor their three-week close. And then the other site I still own. (laughs) I've got a a fully entitled 48-unit site in Arapahoe Square. So You know, fast forward to today and the niche that we're moving to, we see millennials as the biggest buyer segment, and that's going to hold true for some time. They care about the environment more so than previous generations, and the large majority of my employees are millennials. So we've made the shift to go green as a company. Everything that we're going to buy, design, build, sell will be to a lead gold certification or higher. We've delivered one. 
Uh, we deliver our next six homes in December. We've got uh, another 10 that'll deliver in Q1, and we're going to break ground on another 17 homes in the next couple of weeks. So we're just starting to get going on that. Uh, but the, the six unit that we just sold out of that we'll deliver next month is crazy to me how much we were able to sell them for. Uh, we had a buyer that came and said, the size of the, the property is not big enough, but I love what you're doing. And I want to buy something with a LEED certification. And we have clients with some other projects going up that aren't LEED certified, but they're going to be done soon. So we try to push them there. And they said, no, really, we're serious. We want to buy something LEED gold certified. So we sent them over to our next project to deliver. We quoted a price that has some baked in appreciation into it because we're not going to deliver that until probably late Q1. So we had to elevate the price if we we're going to price it now and potentially offer it up. And that project starts into framing this week. They want to walk it once frame, but it looks like they're going to go forward. So there's a buyer that refused to really look at other stuff in the market because they want what we're building. And I believe once we start to build a substantial amount of it, it'll be a real sweet spot. It'll be a niche yet again that we intend to exploit. And my past, every time I hit a niche, I, I, I wasn't hundred percent certain like, Hey, this is definitely something that we need to go after as hard as we can. I am really confident this time, and we are going to build as many as we possibly can, as fast as we possibly can. And I think the municipalities are going to do their damnedest to slow us down, but we're, we're not going to quit. We're going to go, you know, as we get permits, we're going to put them up, build quality, build them to lead gold certification and make buyers happy. Yeah. And you shared with me, like they, I mean, you just shared one story, but you are selling these. I mean, they're, they're moving off the shelf pretty quickly. Yeah. And the, you know, the six that are closing next month, I was pretty surprised by what we were able to get in price for them, but we don't, I mean, we set the price, but the market really dictates what the price is going to be. If we set it low, then we sell for more money. If we set it high, we have to reduce the price and come down. We started with that project, I think 13 or 14 months ago, expecting it to sell in the high 400s. We're under contract in every unit at 650. It's crazy. Dude, that's awesome. so awesome. Yeah. So I know you work with some clients, you do a lot of this on your own, but you have some developers and you're sometimes looking for people to work with. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to share with our viewers? Like, how can we help you? What are you looking for? Yeah. So we've gotten really intentional. You go back in time, three or four years. If you're a developer with a project and you're looking for somebody to sell it, we're raising our hand. We want to jump in. And we've dealt with a few people that we're challenging to work with and in my mind, weren't necessarily doing the right thing by the buyer. So we're intentional now about who we're willing to work with. We're going to, you know, starting at the first of the year, basically draw a line in the sand and say, if you won't build it to a lead gold certification, we won't sell it for you. And it sounds really weird as a, you know, real estate brokerage to turn business away, but we are so confident that we are doing the right thing and it's the way of the future. We're just a little bit early. If it means we lose a client or two, we lose a client or two. I think in the long run, though, we'll gain way more than we lose in the near term. That's fantastic. I want you to show your contact information, but before you do, any last words of wisdom, anything you want to share? Last words of wisdom. You know, the topic is niches. Find your niche. When you're no, you know you're in it and you're doing well, exploit it for as long as you can. That's been... You know, large part of the secret to my success doing this 16 years, I'd say there's been four or five different times that I've found a niche and was able to work that for an extended period of time and do well with it. So you want contact information. Yeah. How do we reach you? Yeah. Email address is Nathan at red You're welcome to call or text me. I'll give you my cell phone at 720-255-4101. I like the smile. People always look at me. Like, I know it's oh, crazy oh, to me, but I, I love it, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So reach out to him if you're a developer, if you're looking. I mean, he's only in Denver. So I know a lot of you are, are not in Denver. I hope you still got some tremendous value from the video. If you are in Denver or the surrounding areas and you're developing properties, you want a little hand holding, you want a little help selling them, reach out to Nathan. Got any financing needs, real estate investor financing experts, you can reach us at pinefinancialgroup.com.